Home is where the heart is. Yet in this World Series, home is where the heartbreak is. In an unprecedented twist, the home team has been humbled in all six games. In a best-of-seven championship series, that's never happened in any sport. Which brings us here to an improbable one-shot winner-take-all. The Nationals on the verge of bringing a World Series title home to our nation's capital for the first time in 95 years start their ace in the Lone Star State. The Astros, dominating in D.C., hammered three times in Houston, still stand ever so close to an astonishing second trophy and a spray of champagne. Is Washington king of the road where the Astros rocket in their raucous home sweet home? Tonight, the two greatest words in baseball, Game 7. What a fall classic, the World Series on Fox. These are fun. Game 7 of the World Series, and the road team has the all-time record at 20-19, won the last three. Trey Turner set to go, and so is Zach Greinke. thing about Zach Greinke he won't have to worry about over amping his velocity he's not a guy that's going to throw 95 96 it's going to be his secondary stuff to watch early on and see if his tension hey. that's caught by Bregman a rocket hit to third by Turner we talked to him before last night's game and he said it just feels like we've been hitting a lot of balls right at Astros defenders and that couldn't hit it any harder. No, he couldn't. And you know how important that is if you're the Astros because keeping him off the base means the chances of runs being scored go way down. He is everything to the Washington Nationals offense at the top of the order. Here's Adam Eaton. Big night last night. He's got the best average in this Nationals lineup during the World Series at 333 went deep. Also was hit by a pitch, dropped down a sacrifice bunt, drew a walk. He was all over the place. 0-1. Oh, well, I'd say that's a good sign. That's that means your nerves are in check. That means you are well within a regular season mindset. That's not easy to do out of the gate. The first inning is so important in a postseason game seven. You want to get in so bad with a zero and let your offense get to bat in the first inning. Talk about this during his game three start. He used to live in the mid 90s. No longer visits that neighborhood anymore. 90 91 is where he will top out. 1 2 pitch to Eaton. Breaking ball is outside as Torino's tried to frame it. 2 and 2. Well, the one thing the Washington Nationals and Houston, for that matter, have shown in this series, they can handle the fastball. And there's already two really slow curveballs. The pitch of the night for Zach Greinke is going to be his changeup. He has struggled the last month or so with that pitch. Hey. Out in front of the plate, Chirinos. He got him. And a strong play by Robinson Chirinos with a smile and a wink for his pitcher Greinke, two out. Yeah, that's a great play. You see they watered down in front of home plate, and so that ball had a little mud on it. And the catcher gets out, makes a great play. And that was the changeup for Zach Granke. The changeup in fastball velocity isn't much difference, but it'll have a little bit more downward action. With two out, nobody on. Here's Anthony Rendon. Five RBI night last night in game six. Left side, Bregman 
Down go the Nationals. One, two, three. Up come the Astros in the bottom of the first in game seven. Live. Here's the Astros lineup. Typical look George Springer, Jose Altuve, and Michael Brantley at the top. Four, five, six is Alex Bregman, Yuli Guriel, and Jordan Alvarez, the DH. The back end is Carlos Correa, Robinson Chirinos, and Josh Reddick in right, batting ninth. Against the right hander, Max Scherzer, who is 3 0 this postseason, ERA of 2.16. He really gutted it out through five innings in game one to get the win. He did. He's going to attack with his fastball, but at this first pitch, I would not throw a first pitch fastball to George Springer. Look for him to maybe throw a slider, but Max Scherzer has every weapon you need to get every hitter out. We'll see if he's comfortable in the first or a little too amped up. 97. The shot he got in his back. Will take care of the inflammation. If it was in his arm or, sh or uh, uh, shoulder or elbow, I don't believe he'd be able to pitch. But because it was in a muscle, that's how quickly you can free that up. <laughs> that's down. The count 2 0 on Springer, who jumped on an early delivery last night and hit a double off the wall and scored on a sack fly after a wild pitch. Sack fly by Altuve. He waits to hit next. Here comes a 2 0 from Scherzer. Two and one. That's that slider. It's so hard to pick up. The angle he throws, he's got a good change up. He'll even throw a slower breaking ball. And he's in attack mode. Ah. Catches the inside corner and the count two and two. Series full counts, tons of them. Might even be the difference maker in tonight's game. Who wins the three-two count battle? Springer skies one to center for Robles. 
And that's out number one. The home plate umpire is Jim Wolf. At first base, it's Doug Eddings. The crew chief who started this World Series at second has gone all the way back to second. It's Gary Cedarstrom. James Hoy is at third. Lance Barksdale is down the left field line, and Sam Holbrook is in right. Replay official is Alan Porter back in New York. As El Tube digs his way in. This is the first time the road team has won six games in any best of seven series in Major League Baseball history, NHL history, NBA history. That strike one in the last five World Series have been clinched on the road. That includes A.J. Hinch and his Astros at Dodger Stadium in game seven two years ago. A one pitch to El Tupe for the shortstop Turner. Two down. So a good start here for Scherzer in the first inning so far this postseason. He's allowed five runs total. Second inning, a total of one run, and after that, it's shut down. Yeah, he's a he's an emotional guy. He pitches with a lot of energy. He struts around, he walks around, he gets the ball. He's creating the tempo, putting the hitter at ease, or not at ease, because he is on attack mode. He is not going to take long to deliver the ball. Here's Brantley, ball one outside. When we talked to George Springer before the game about Scherzer, he said he's unlike any other starter and that he gets it stands on and he's the one determining the tempo of how the at bats going to go. One oh pitch <laughs> two and oh. Brantley hitting three thirty three in this World Series eight hits twenty four at bats. Possesses as good a batting eye as any hitter in baseball, and he's up on the count here, three and zero. Oh. <laughs> three and one. Astros are wearing their orange jerseys. Jerseys they wore in game seven in their win at Dodger Stadium in 2017. Who says baseball players are superstitious? 3 1. He's outside in a two out walk. So that wasn't coincidence? I'm going to say no. Here comes Bregman. Last night, Alex Bregman hit a home run in the first inning and then decided to uh, bring his luggage with him. And then Juan Soto said, okay. He went deep in the fifth and he said, you're going to do it. I am too. Bregman was apologetic after the ball game to his manager. He was apologetic to the media. Juan Soto got a visit from his manager, Dave Martinez, who said, that's not the way we play. As Scherzer drills the inside part of the plate for strike one. Well this series is filled with all kinds of swings all kinds of emotions big hits big plays tremendous pitching performances and sometimes you can get lost in some of that emotion. Good pitch by Scherzer as Bregman was jammed a bit Eaton is there and. First base runner Brantley is stranded. Who's coming up? The 21 year old Juan Soto. First up in the second. No score.
Soto, Kendrick, and Cabrera will face him. Juan Soto has popped three home runs, two in this park. He went deep in game one. He went deep last night. Combined 830 feet with those two home runs here at Minute Maid Park. That's down and in the count two and oh well he has gotten the attention of the Astros manager A.J. Hinch and the pitching staff he's handled the fastball we saw those two home runs and they're going to have to slow it down to him. And uh, this young man has been a marked man when he is not going to be the guy that beats you tonight. That's how you got to treat him and at 21 years old you would think well, how could that be well he's been that good and he's been that dangerous so. He's commanding that much attention. What's he doing on three and oh? He's taking strike one after taking a couple of steps to first. It's a little cool, believe it or not, here in the dome, and the weather outside's a little bit uh Colder than normal, so you may see some pitchers blowing on their hands. And elements being a little bit different. 3 1 pitch. That's on a rope into right, and a leadoff base hit by Juan Soto. Now 8 for 24 at the plate with his three home runs, and he's on to start the second. This is a graphic that you and our producer Pete Macheska put together about how even this series has been. I love it. Every category right there. These two guys and these two teams have absolutely had their moments where contact has been crucial. Home runs have been huge and the starters have all had individual moments. Seven games to determine it. There's a ball low to Kendrick. When we talked to A.J. Hinch about Granke before the game he said you know. What makes him so good and what you see a lot with Granky is he's able to pitch his way through trouble. Guys will get on, he'll fall behind hitters, he'll come back and typically puts up a zero. It was eight and one after the Astros got him in the regular season, but this is game seven. How long is the leash? That's back to Granky. Out at second, out at first, double play. And the five time gold glove award winning pitcher takes care of that one easily. Well he's known for getting a lot of ground ball double plays but he's also known for that athleticism. There is nothing about him right now that looks like this moment has hey. got him a little bit off his game. They may get hits. He may not execute but it doesn't look like the little things that typically this game can do to people is bothering him at this point and that's a good sign for the Astros and especially for A.J. Hintz. One plate umpire just went out to check the ball. It checked out so Grinky gets it back and his dribble Cabrera steps in. Five for 18 in this World Series. Down for ball one. Game seven mentally for everybody is going to be fatiguing. You're at the end of the rope in the season. Everybody's gas tank's a little empty. It's the one that can literally go pitch to pitch, batter to batter. And at the end of the day, attention to detail will be the it'll be it'll feel like the longest game you've ever pitched, whether it's three innings, four innings, sometimes you're in a third inning, you feel like you're in the seventh. That's the difference between a game seven and just a regular start or even a postseason game that doesn't have an elimination tied to it. Breaking ball on two and oh. This is the fifth elimination game for this Nationals team. They trailed in each one of the previous four and came back to win. And those games have averaged six runs per game. They've hit eight home runs in their pitchers. Pitch to a 2.19 ERA. Here's a 2 1 pitch. Ah, 2 and 2. The 
It's just unbelievable. I, I just I don't ever remember seeing a team as gritty and their ability to just keep fighting back. Two two pitch. Nice pick by Guriel. And his stellar defense continues in this postseason. Bottom of the second rolls in. Astros bat no score. by Progressive, making it easy to bundle your home and car insurance. And by Tide, if it's got to be clean, it's got to be Tide. And a welcome back to the World Series presented by YouTube TV on Fox. Yuli Gurriel first up. And a two out two run double against Scherzer in the first inning of game one. Inside. Takes it inside. Good ball one. Well, when you're pitching on the road in these kind of games, you can see the crowd's into everything. They're standing, they're hoping that a rally happens. You want to keep the crowd to a dull roar because it's going to be loud. <laughs> with every pitch, with every moment that goes their home, the home team, you have to make sure you do your job. To make it a dull roar, and if you're Zach Greinke, you want the roar of your crowd to not take you off your game. Ah! Just poured in there at 96 from Scherzer, former 11th overall pick by Arizona, out of Mizzou in 2006. Here's a 2-1. That's well hit in the left. Back at the wall. Strike first in game seven.
Jordan Alvarez goes after the first pitch and fouls at strike one. Unfortunately that's not the dull roar. That was a slider that went more lateral movement than sharp movement and Guriel just deposited it. His first home run of this World Series that's in the right and the base hit for Jordan Alvarez. Let's go back to the home run by Yuli Gurriel. Fastball was strike down and then that slider just stayed right in the middle and it's a classic. Gurriel kind of keep the bat in the zone as long as possible and then lift the ball in the air. Man he can center some baseballs. He's had a good postseason with the bat, with the glove. One on, nobody out. Strike one on Correa. Before the game, Kurt Suzuki was in the lineup, the catcher for the Nationals. He caught the majority of Max Scherzer's innings this year, but he suffered a strained hip flexor earlier in this World Series he's available but they took him out of the lineup so Jan Gomes is back behind the plate again tonight. Inside. That's inside one ball one strike the numbers with Suzuki 2.09 ERA when he does the catching with Gomes 4.09 regular season postseason included. In at the knees, strike two on Correa. That's where Max has been really good with his fastball. And that's why, if he can get his changeup going with the height of that fastball and then he throws the changeup, the hitters are going to have no chance. But that changeup needs to be worked in. He's got to get the feel for that. Either that or some more breaking balls instead of the slider. The breaking ball is a change of speed. <laughs> There's the changeup right there. Typically, if you're a high fastball pitcher, let's say like Cole and Verlander, you're going to bring in more curveballs because that works with the height of that pitch. If you're getting low four seam fastballs at the bottom of the zone, then you want to be able to break the ball at that height or throw your changeup off that height. Another one, two. Base hit right field. Alvarez will stop, and it's two on with nobody out. A homer back to back singles, and the Astros have it cooking here in the second. Well, this is just good hitting. The fastball gets on the outer part of the plate, and it looks like the Astros have committed to hitting the fastball off of Max Scherzer. And doing the little things. We've seen the little things creep back into this series from both sides. Last night, the base hit the other way by Rendon after an infield hit by Turner and the sacrifice bunt. There, Correa not trying to hit the ball off the train. He just shot it through the wide open right side and hands it to Robinson Chirinos, who shows points. And bunts it in the air for out number one. And a big out for the Nationals as Chirinos can't get the ball down. And he'll be disappointed with that because he had an opportunity to put runners in scoring position with second and third with Reddick. Chirinos with two home runs in this World Series trying to get a bunt down pops it up here's Reddick two for 12 one RBI in this series against the Nationals. Has not done much hitting this postseason just five for 34 147 average. And this is where you can make that all disappear if you draw Josh Reddick. A hit or two in the right spot. No one's going to worry about what you weren't able to do. It's what you did in a game seven scenario. 
That ball stays fair, hit the bag, and the runners advance to second and third, but two out. You can see Zimmerman given the whoo sign when that ball could have gone in any direction off that bag. But it hit the top of the bag and stayed straight. He got jammed and he hits the ball down the line. Watch it hit the bag right there. And relief from Zimmerman. And now Springer. Fly to center his first time. Eight for 24 in this World Series. He was the MVP of this round two years ago. Down for ball one. George Springer, the first player in history to have at least five extra base hits and five walks in multiple World Series. Looking for RBIs here and a base hit. Here comes a 2 0 pitch. Inside. Inside. With Altuve on deck, it's 3-0. The Astros had an unbelievable record in the regular season when they scored first, 71 wins, and in the postseason they've had nine, nine and three when they were able to get on the board. Seventy-two and eighteen. They lead here, looking for more. Springer in the left, hit it hard. Soto for the out. Couldn't hit it any harder in a sinking line drive. Juan Soto is there to make the catch. Right off the top of the grass. Guriel let off with a home run to left. Astros have left three in the game and lead game seven by one.
first and second nobody out after that did not score anymore. Good job by Scherzer to limit it to a one run inning and here's Zimmerman taking strike one from Zach Greinke. Well, this game has been tough on starting pitchers in game seven uh, none have pitched more than four and two thirds innings. Of the past six guys that have been able to uh, start this game so we'll see if anyone breaks that mold. And I know for. Dave Martinez he would love to get his horse through five and then he's got some weapons to line up and of course AJ's got a couple of weapons himself. That's outside two and one the Astros are the first home team to score first in a World Series game seven since the 2001 Diamondbacks against the Yankees. Wow. And that had a happy ending for the home team that night. Here's a 2 1 pitch. Breaking ball is sit off the end of the bat. Brinky looks like he's pitching in the middle of May. One down. This World Series has shown the postseason is anything but predictable, and this year, more than 600,000 fans tried to predict how October would unfold in the MLB postseason bracket challenge presented by MGM Resorts. As we play game seven, less than 400 entries remain intact. With two hundred fifty thousand dollars on the line, how's that possible? How could four hundred still be in play? When this has never happened like this. Amazing, some smart people out there. I would agree. Hey. As Gomes takes ah. a strike, yeah, we've seen history. It's never happened before. The road team has won each of the first six games. And yet there are still perfect brackets out there. With one out Gomes is in the hole nothing and two. To center at Springer two out. And with the bases empty, up comes Victor Robles. Now a quick word from MasterCard. Breaking the action? Yep. It's fast when I tap and go with my MasterCard. Priceless. Now back to the game. Robles three for 21. In this World Series, one RBI. Last night struck out three times, was 0 for 4, hitting in the number nine spot. Hey. Flies one into center for Springer. Back on the move. That ball carried, but Springer was there in another eight pitch inning for Grinky, who so far is turning in a gem. Part of the order coming up for the Astros, up by one.
redcross.org slash MLB or text CA wildfires to 90999 to make a donation today. Glad you're with us. Game seven, bottom of the third, and Scherzer hits the inside corner with strike one to Jose Altuve. Michael Brantley and Alex Bregman will follow. Zach Greinke surfed right through the first nine hitters with very little difficulty. Gave up a leadoff hit in the second to Soto. Got a double play ball off the bat of Kendrick. Greinke's faced the minimum through three. He's thrown only 28 pitches. Scherzer. It's the inside corner again in the count one and two. Yeah, the amount of pitches that Granky throws not going to be the gauge for AJ. It's going to be the traffic on the bases. And so he's been pretty stress free through three innings, which is incredible. Scherzer's had to work really hard in his two innings of work. Now, Tuve just spoiled that pitch. Twenty four hits this postseason for Altuve. We talked about it last night. The all time record in one postseason for total hits twenty six. Pablo Sandoval in 2014 of the Giants. Five foot six one sixty eight well off the plate. And he's on to start the inning. With hit number 25 this postseason. This is what I was talking about yesterday. He expands the zone, and you can get some strikeouts against this guy with runners on, but then he'll do stuff like this reach a ball that the pitcher goes, there's no way he should be able to reach, but he has the ability to find the baseball and do stuff like that. It's an amazing gift. And there are times he'll have some weak ground outs on first pitches, but he can make so many things happen. Michael Brantley now. Drew a walk his first time. Here's the thing we forget. We talk about the journey of the Nationals and how they faced all these elimination games and coming back and everything they did. The Houston Astros have not had an easy route. It looked like that against the Rays up two games to none. They were pushed to the tilt in game five. A great series against the Yankees pushed to the tilt in game six. Extra innings almost went to game seven. And now here they are game seven against the Nationals. So as great of a year as they've had and as dominating as a year they've had. They too have had to win some really really clutch games to get to this point. Different sort of uh, rally cap look for Josh Reddick. Whatever works in a game seven. That's into left field. And Soto is there for out number one. The batter will be Bregman, who posted on his social media that earlier this afternoon he lost his grandfather. His mom's father passed away. and dedicating tonight's game and what he does to his grandpa. One on one out. Bregman fly to right his first time. But A.J. Hinch wanted to make sure it didn't happen after carrying the bat down to first. The emotion of last night, him being apologetic for that, is that it would carry over into tonight's game. Good stop by Gomes. What Bregman has been doing is owning the middle third of the plate, so the part closest to him. 
Any ball that has gotten in that area, for the most part, he has hit hard, whether it be the grand slam or the home run last night. They've been getting him out of way, and they've been getting him out in deep counts where he's staying a little patient looking for his pitch. Outside. Just missed outside, 2-0. Maybe you're checking out the World Series for the first time in this game seven. Bregman, as we've talked about this postseason, was the best hitter in the league from the first of August on. Led all of baseball in average on base percentage, slugging percentage, OPS, extra base hits, RBIs at 52. <laughs> Count here's 3 0. Oh. He's been critical of his. Hitting and play in this postseason. 15 of 62. But four homers, 12 RBIs in October. And he's been much better here in the World Series. Springer was swinging on 3 0. He lined out. Here's Bregman. <laughs> ha! Takes a strike. Tuve with one stolen base, one caught stealing in this World Series. Now you mentioned we've seen a little bit of everything. Stolen bases. <laughs> a better move, stronger throw from Scherzer, but Altuve back easily. Reason he's paying attention because it's a good running count, not a stolen base count, but a running count, knowing that Bregman will protect the strike zone and not expand it. Not going. Ah. Strike two at 96. And then Scherzer got that injection on Sunday when he couldn't answer the bell, couldn't get himself dressed before game five. Tested. His arm here yesterday before the game, and then last night was getting ready to come into the ball game, working hard in the bullpen. Runner goes on ball four low. Two on one out. That'll bring in Guriel, who has a double and a homer on Scherzer in this World Series. Statcast AI. Powered by AWS. Yeah, that was just outstanding. Getting down and going to get it. Over 100 miles an hour. You see the distance it traveled. Awfully good left field for a lot of hitters. Right handed hitters can get in trouble trying to hook the ball because it's shorter distance to left field. That's the home run ball from the second as he led off. Inning number two with that blast into left. Ball one. Yuli, the third Cuban born player with a home run in a World Series game seven. Tony Perez in 1975 for the Reds. Bert Campanaris in 73 with Oakland. Back and out of play, a ball and a strike. Well, he has a unique skill set, does Yuri. The fact that he had about 60 at bats here at one point in the postseason where he didn't strike out. He's super tough to strike out. He can use every bit of the field. And even though he was having some uh, rough luck hitting the ball hard with not much results, those results have come in the World Series. Yeah, earlier this postseason, he finished off a stretch of 64 straight postseason at bats without a strikeout. And he's up on the count here, two and one.
Popped up. Shallow right. Eaton coming to get it. The runners will hold. Two down. And now another Cuban born player in this Astro lineup, the rookie and 22 year old Jordan Alvarez, who hit 27 home runs during the regular season and will likely be the American League Rookie of the Year. Game one for Max Scherzer, he was all over the place. It was literally a fight to try to keep the game within reach and he did it somehow he had traffic on the bases he was pulling his fastball spiking his change up in the ground he's had much better stuff here second time around still the Astros have made him work really hard 50 pitches and look back at Altuve. Max is at his best. He can throw that fastball anywhere in the strike zone, have late life, and beat the hitter. And then, of course, spin the ball and change speeds. <laughs> Foul back. He doesn't have to be location conscious most of the time. That fastball he threw cut. And a lot of hitters will tell you that. They get ready to hit a fastball, and it has cutting action. He's not holding back, in other words. <laughs> wow. Came right after Alvarez and Jordan fouled it straight back 0 and 2. So, in the first time of the history of game sevens, we have two Cy Young pitchers going at it. The disparity between the fastballs. Are quite obvious, but both of them will grunt to get it done. Ranky winning the Cy Young with Kansas City in 09. Scherzer, a three time Cy Young Award winner, twice with Washington, is 0 2. <laughs> and you said it during our open, and it bears repeating. One of the few guys who seems to have outperformed. His huge long term contract that he signed before the 2015 season. And I can remember players coming out when he turned down that deal in Detroit going, What is he thinking? A 1 2. 2 and 2. What he was thinking is it worked out. And for a guy that couldn't pitch or finish games and pitch enough innings when he went to the National League in that seven year deal, He's won Cy Youngs, he's pitched innings, he's finished games, and he has been the face of the Washington Nationals and really kind of their heartbeat. Two two. <laughs> High fly ball to center. Robles is back on the track to end the inning. And we're through three. Astros have left five and lead by one.
sponsored by Indeed, and you touched on this earlier. As Trey Turner goes, so go the Nationals. In the 11 wins this postseason, he's hit 313, scored 10 runs. In their five losses this postseason, hasn't scored a run. And is hit under 100. He lined out to third his first time up, takes a strike. Well, I wouldn't normally say this in any other game, but this will be the most important inning that Granke pitches because chances are he's not going to face Turner again. So he's already gone through the lineup once. He's had three clean innings. He gets Turner out. He feels better about what we just talked about. He's just kept him off balance so far. In game number three, Granke had 65 pitches after three innings tonight, 28. And he's faced the minimum, first starter to face the minimum through three innings in a World Series game seven since Kurt Schilling in 2001 for Arizona against the Yankees. Oh, two pitches in the dirt. That last pitch he threw was one of the nastiest changeups he's thrown in a long time. And you just hope, if you're Zach, that that feeling and that connectivity comes back. He's such a good athlete. He has that little pause in his delivery and being able to repeat that. Over and over again. Not a lot of people can do that unless you truly are a pretty good athlete. So what he's learned to do when he's lost his fastball, he has a little cut action to his fastball every once in a while, two seamer. And he works both sides of the plate. When he misses in the middle, it's not good for him. Other guys can get away with it. He will not at this point in his career. When you've got a guy that can take care of the middle of the field. This one, he could have made the play, but he catcher gets it. This is the easy one, but the easy part was fielding it. The hard part was throwing it down to it to get the double play. And then this one, a nice little make sure you knock it down, throw it out. But watch how this ball and how quickly he's able to get to it because he finishes in such great position. He really truly is an added infielder after he lets go of the ball. Breaking ball misses to Eaton mentioned it earlier five time gold glove award winner and a guy who's creative clearly on the mound he's got great touch and feel with his pitches he usually reserve the word crafty for left handers he's turned into a crafty right hander Wow! give him another gold glove. Two out. So if this was a regular season game, somebody in the dugout in Washington would go, hey guys, we need to pick on somebody else. Quit hitting it back to Granky. But again, good finish, good reaction, no stress. Man, you couldn't ask for a better start. For Zach Granke, AJ Hinch, and his decision making and the confidence of this crowd. This is at 91 to Rendon, who grounded out to third his first time up. Because he thinks differently, he'll hyper focus on things that go awry or that things he thinks should be different. He different. He does think a lot differently than most people. It makes him truly unique. And we were talking about my, why that might actually this game might work in his advantage because he won't put any extra. Just the way he answers questions in the post. <laughs> Pre and post, you know, you don't do that in a regular season. They don't interview you before the game. He's not into talking much. And that man right there has done a nice job in this organization. Yeah, they kind of drag him into those press conferences. Hey. That's part of the duty during the postseason. That's low. The count's three and oh here. And some of his answers to questions. Give you a little look into what he's all about. I'll give you one after this 3 0 pitch to Rendon. You know what he's thinking? Ah. He's thinking about going deep with a count in his favor. The question any nerves or kind of emotions right now starting a big game tomorrow? Zach Greinke a little excited about it, but we'll see. 
Wish it was in the National League Park. <laughs> Which means translation. Want I want to hit. That's fouled away. And no answers are uh, really any longer than that. You ever fantasize about pitching in a Game 7 World Series? Probably. I can't remember doing that at the moment, but probably. <laughs> okay. Three two pitch. What a start in game seven. For the 36 year old Zach Greinke. He's faced the minimum through four. And he and the Astros lead one to nothing. Here. Guriel has gone deep. And then shutdown pitching by Zank Grenke is taking care of Washington so far, but a long way to go tonight. Strike one on Correa, underway in the bottom of the fourth, bottom three in the lineup for Houston against Max Scherzer. And any questions about how the 35 year old would get along here after the cortisone injection and the muscle spasms in his back upper back and neck have been answered throwing hard throwing well better than he did in game one. <laughs> Strike two.
Correa bounced a base hit through the right side his first time up and more conventional defensive alignment on the infield than during that at bat when Alvarez was on at first with nobody out. Inside. One and two. One two pitch. Same spot two and two. Well, there's a. Scherzer has the ability for this moment to go as long as he needs to because he trains for this moment. He's one of those guys, the throwback guy that still runs a lot. We talked about his motor and how he generates so much on the mound. A lot of energy. Now there's a major difference between these two besides their stuff. It's how they finish. And Scherzer's going to give you everything he's got, not like Goose Gossage, but he's going to give you legs, arms, and then when he finishes, his head's going to drop straight down, and he won't be able to see as quickly as Granky does. So the ball up the middle will be a little tougher for a guy like Max Scherzer when he fully goes through his delivery. It was 0-2. Here comes another 2-2 pitch. Correa. Yeah. To the right side again, Cabrera. A nice play to his left. One down. Tomorrow night, Thursday night football, and a matchup of the 49ers undefeated against the Arizona Cardinals with the number one overall pick, Kyler Murray. As they just had a three game win streak snapped. All starts at 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific on Fox, NFL Network, and streaming on Prime Video. Wish I knew somebody that was going to that game. Yeah. Oh, wait, you do? You know Aikman. Oh, that's right. Troy will be there, right? He's watching tonight. <laughs> Troy will be there ah! for Stina Pink, Aaron Andrews, and our whole crew for Thursday Night Football. Should be a good one. Come on, Troy. Pick up golf again. I know you want to. Come on. Text him back. <laughs> Chirinos tried to bunt his first time, popped it up, and now he's in the hole, nothing and two. There's a home run by Guriel in the second, then hits by Alvarez and Correa. Chirinos came up and tried to move him to second and third. With a bunt, popped it up and caught by Jan Gomes for out number one, and Scherzer avoided any more scoring. A strikeout and the first of the night for Scherzer. Two out here in the fourth. Good sign for Max. We'll see what he already has done compared to game one. He had to work so hard. He did have the seven strikeouts. He gave up those two runs in the first inning. For Max Scherzer and most guys, and people will ask, why, why do some of the best pitchers in the game struggle early and then they get locked in later? Well, most of those are going to be hard throwers and guys who are trying to establish their fastball and they have a lot of energy and they usually hone in on that energy and that fastball, particularly after the first or second inning. Awesome. But for Max Scherzer, the reason why he strikes out so many guys, it's that pitch right there and his slider. And when the two are working together, they have a hard time. His manager Dave Martinez saying before the game it's when guys get on base that's when he really bears down concentrates as he did back in the second. He also stranded two in the third and the Astros have left five runners on tonight. As the counts two and zero oh here on Reddick. Strike one. Dave Martinez has been under instructions to stay calm in the dugout after he underwent a cardiac catheterization in the middle of September. He was hot last night, got ejected, got checked out after the game as Reddick is on with two out. And Scherzer has yet to go through an inning one, two, three. 
and that's big because the more they can make Max go to the well, dig deep, make pressure pitches, the better chance they're going to have to knock him out of the game earlier. Of course, he's had that extended rest, but for two days you couldn't know what he was feeling like because he couldn't feel and move very well. In step Springer 0 for 2. He lined out to left on a 3 0 pitch. Runners at second and third to end the second. Springer is one guy who doesn't pay any attention to the data that's provided to these hitters with regard to count and trends. Yeah. Pitches that certain pitchers throw on certain counts. He just wants to see it and hit it. And he sees that one down and in ball one. Yeah, it was unique getting to talk to him. And I just asked him, you know, what 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 percentage of times do you go to the plate looking for a pitch, sitting on a pitch, based on what the pitcher was trying to do to you from one bat to the next? He goes, I really don't do that at all. I can't afford to do that. It's not my style. It doesn't work for me. Who were real good guess hitters, and then there were certain guys when they were looking for a pitch, no matter where that pitch was, when they saw it, they swung, which is not necessarily a good thing. If you're looking for a slider, you need to look for the slider over the plate, not down and away. Inside. Three and oh. He's already cut loose once on 3 and 0 in this game. And he draws a walk here. Third walk issued by Scherzer. He thought he had thrown strike one and said it was ball four. Two on, two out, and here comes Jose Altuve. Pretty good pitch, 3 0. Just a little bit low. to make sure he Astros are 0 for 5 in this game with runners in scoring position they've got one at second that's Reddick runner at first that's Springer and Jose Altuve at the plate again aggressive on the first pitch Max knows it everyone knows it Those are, those are the ones Joe that he pulls that's the change up and when it starts over the middle of the plate and he doesn't pull it hitters will come out of their shoes but when he pulls it the hitter can recognize that that ball is away it ain't, it's not coming back and it, it'll end up being a ball. at 96 in a 1 1 count. Altuve one of the shorter guys in the league but one of the best high ball hitters in the league and that's where you have to keep the ball to him. He's looking middle of the belt and even sometimes higher the way that he can get on top and just smoke a high fastball. Another good block by Gomes. Gomes was part of the Cleveland Indians roster when they went to seven games and came up just short against the Cubs three years ago. Here's a 2 1 pitch. In the center, Robles is there. And the Astros now 0 for 6 with runners in scoring position have left seven. 
through four innings in game seven still a one to nothing game and back after this from your local Fox station. Game seven of the World Series play ball is MLB's initiative to inspire all forms of baseball and softball participation making play opportunities available and fun for everyone to find a youth organization near you go to playball.org and follow at playball on Twitter Facebook and Instagram Juan Soto at the plate is the only hit tonight for Washington and he takes a strike from Zach Greinke. Soto then Kendrick then Cabrera. <laughs> that came in at 66 miles per hour strike two. And that's something Soto hasn't seen much of. Now he'll get spread out. He's checking his own computer trying to figure out what Zach's going to do to him with two strikes.
Rendon struck out to end the top of the fourth. Soto strikes out to start the top of the fifth. Here's Howie Kendrick, the DA. Two and zero, the count. Two and one. Zach doesn't throw many pitches straight, and that's why. He can still pitch in this league for a few more years because he can hit both sides of the plate. He has great variety of speeds between his slowest pitch and his fastest pitch. Hey. Boy, Kendrick totally off balance and not ready for that pitch at 89, two and two. And see, to hitters, you, it seems like 95 because he slows you down with sliders and curveballs and changeups, and then he speeds it up. And it only is 89 miles an hour, but to the hitter, he doesn't know that. He's looking slow, 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 reacting. Full count. He is signed for another couple of years, which gives the Astros some protection with the expected departure of Garrett Cole, who's about to test the free agent waters at the age of 29 and cash in big. Garrett Cole is available to work tonight on two days rest out of the bullpen. 3 2 pitch. A one out walk. And the first walk handed out tonight by Grinke. Bottom of the zone where he wanted it, and a good take by Holly Kendrick. I mean, this is just, just an inch. Right there. A little bit down. So one on one out for his dribble Cabrera. He grounded out his first time on a nice play by Guriel. And we've said that plenty this postseason. They've been throwing Cabrera a ton of off speed pitches. A lot of curveballs. Hey. That's outside. Tom, give us more on Grinky and uh, maybe this home plate umpire. Yeah, that curveball you mentioned. Nobody this year threw more pitches under 70 miles an hour than Zach Grinky. What's interesting is playing for the Milwaukee Brewers in 2011, he had a running bet with Randy Wolf on who could throw the slowest curveball. Randy Wolf won the bet 59 miles an hour. That's his brother, Jim Wolf, behind the plate tonight. Now Jim Wolf is there tonight because he graded out number one this season on balls and strike calls. That includes the job he did in the league division series. And tonight I got to say he's doing a terrific job because we haven't talked about the umpire too much in balls and strikes tonight. Yeah we had to wait for game seven. <laughs> hey. One one pitch outside. is outside two and one. It was worth the wait. As this postseason, this entire season rolls forward to one game to decide who wins it all. The Astros playing in their 180th game, the Nationals playing in their 179th game. 2 1 pitch, a bunt. Granke hops off the mound, gets the out. Two down. And he was going after that bunt before Cabrera squared around, it looked like. I wonder if Torinos was run was yelling two, two, two. He gets to it. And I think he was, but Grinky was just gonna make sure he gets the out. He knows what he's got to protect when the shift is on. Well now Zimmerman can tie it with a hit. He bounced back to Granke his first time up. That goes down as a sacrifice. Whereas Drupal Cabrera. 
And if Cranky gets this out, it'll be the first time he completes five in a while. He's made four start this postseason. That's a strike. And in his four starts this postseason, Granke has averaged four and two thirds innings with an ERA of 5.30. How about that note? Five assists tonight, most by a pitcher in a World Series since your buddy Greg Maddox in game two of 96. He's questioning the call because of the way the ball was caught. He just saw the last end of the ball of the glove just slide by his back hip. Strike two. Now in Zimmerman's mind the plate just got four feet wide because he saw the glove on the inside part of the plate off and now he saw one off on the outside part of the plate. And he's in the hole 0 and 2. Pitch number 58. For ball one. The Astros made a deal on the 31st of July, gave four players to Arizona, and it took the owner, Jim Crane, saying, We'll make the money work, throw in the fourth player, we need Brinke. And here he is, game seven for the Astros. Biggest start of his life. And he is through five. Up by one. Wrinkles send the wrong message. Help prevent them with new Downey Wrinkle Guard. Chilly evening in Houston, Texas. Rainy all day. Supposed to be even worse tomorrow weather-wise. And we welcome you back to the World Series presented by YouTube TV on Fox as Max Scherzer 
rolls into inning number five down by one on a Yuli Gurriel home run in the second. Michael Brantley takes a ball outside. Brantley has walked and fly to left. <laughs> Two and oh. Really hasn't gotten that change up going. And you see Cole just getting loose. That one was uh, that was his first throw at about 87. <laughs> Two and zero. The count. Ground ball. Right side. Base hit through the shift. Talking to AJ Hinch before the game. You know, he kind of sees big picture, and he said the dramatic move is when I send Garrett Cole out to the bullpen, and during that last break. With Max Scherzer warming up, Garrett Cole made that long, slow walk out to the pen, and now he's getting loose. He's never appeared out of the bullpen in the big leagues, in the minors. He did it once at UCLA, and the Astros would like an encore of sorts what he did with his seven innings back in game five in D.C. Allowing one run on three hits in that victory. Here's Bregman. And there's strike one. Game one of this World Series, Garrett Cole suffered the loss. That win two games ago put Houston up three games to two, coming home. That's all he can do for Mr. Bregman, but he sure loves the ball in. So Max established that pitch in there. Let's see if he goes away. Two pitch foul. Talked about having that three games to two series lead coming home for the Astros. Six teams in World Series history have won game seven after a game six loss at home. Last time it was done by the 97 Marlins over Cleveland at 3 2 11 inning win. Brantley at first, nobody out in the 0-2. Good take by Bregman. I just think of these two fan bases. Can you imagine Houston leaving here down 0-2 and the fan base going, oh my gosh. And then they go home and the fan base there leaving down three games to two, thinking their chances had just been lost. And here we are game six, game seven, in a neutral situation. Somebody is going to be thrilled in about two hours that strike three as Scherzer blows it by him and strike out number two for the veteran right hander here in game seven well, Max Scherzer if you're going to try and hit him here's the angle you're going to see it the fastball is going to be a lower three quarter he's going to have his hands on top fingers on top of the ball with the fastball slider and the curveball and when these three pitches come in you're going to see them all do a little bit different and the speed variation is going to be what makes him so tough. Fastball 96 miles an hour sometimes and beyond. And then you see the slider at 87 and the curveball at 80. Outside. Guriel takes a ball. The late life is what makes Max special. And he has been pitching the last month probably or two. Battling the previous injury he had in that upper back area and just fighting through games. It's not the late life four seam kind of rising fastball. Ah. 
One ball, one strike. Ken Rosenthal, I know you talked to Max and people with the Nationals about what he's been through rehab-wise over the last three days. Right, Joe. It wasn't just the cortisone shot that got him back on the mound. Last night, talking to reporters, Scherzer mentioned Keith Pine, who is part of the Nationals medical team. He's a chiropractor, an expert on biomechanics, osteopathic techniques. They basically did two treatments a day starting Monday, 45 minutes each, worked on soft tissue, core stabilization, strengthening the neck, opening joint space, freeing the muscles. And these sessions, which continue today, they helped Scherzer get to this point. It was really a combination of things, the shot, the treatment, and here's Max pitching in the fifth inning of game seven. And thanks one ball two strikes on Guriel. And the reason that's so important to Max you can see the effort he gives when he throws a baseball and he exerts and that neck snaps down when he lets go of the ball and actually goes away from home plate and then of course he looks back as fast as he can to see what happens. Left side, Turner. Good play out over to first safe. And the inning continues. The only run of the game so far is the home run by the man at first now, Yuli Gurriel. Back in the second, 4D replay sponsored by T Mobile. moment with father and son out there and left. Nice catch. And Guriel just beat that relay to first. And that allows Jordan Alvarez a chance to hit. He homered in support of Garrett Cole in game five at Nationals Park and takes ball one. Interesting to see what uh, Mr. Alvarez does with a whole season next year. Of course, getting called up late, dominating second half of baseball, and struggled up until the World Series a little bit, especially in the ALCS. But man, has he gotten it going here? Sat out a couple games because of the National League, and then with Garrett Cole in the mound, strikeout pitcher, not much needed from the defense from Alvarez. He was able. To break out of it. Came up in mid June, hit 27 big league home runs. One in this World Series and takes inside. Count 2 0. Say he's swinging on three and zero. Yes, yes he should. And he did not get the fastball. Three and one. Two out for Carlos Correa. And now a quick word from Roman Health. Get started with your free online visit at GetRoman.com slash TV. Roman, proud partner of Major League Baseball. 
Chris Correa Scherzer walked three in game one he's walked four tonight his pitch count at 93. Nationals have Patrick Corbin in their bullpen. They have Anibal Sanchez in their bullpen. And they trust two late inning relievers in their pen Daniel Hudson and Sean Doolittle. Two on here for the Astros up by one. And a strike hits the inside corner. More than likely. Dave Martinez would love to have Corbin start an inning and not come in the middle of the inning. So be interesting to see how he navigates if he needs to get Max out during the middle of an inning. And that's what Martinez the manager Dave was talking about with regard to Scherzer the opponents one for twenty seven with runners in scoring position. That's when Max really bears down and he's 0 and 2 on Carlos Correa. The slower breaking balls out of Max. <laughs> two and two. Ideally, you want this to be your decision pitch. You really don't want to go to three two, send the runners with two outs. So Max is thinking what pitch he can get right here to get action a swing and a miss a ground out. And uncharacteristically the Houston Astros which had been so good at home. Three for twenty seven. Runners in scoring position in this World Series Correa it was 0 and 2 now the 2 2. Third baseman's in the game, one of the best. Made so many great plays. This one just off the end of the glove. Alvarez went first to third and just got in under the tag. They were going to get a review. See if he popped off the base at any point. I just don't think Rendon kept the tag on long enough, but it's worth a challenge anytime in game seven. You can't go home with him. This replay review is powered by Mitel. The ball's clearly fair. That's not what they're looking at. They're looking at this part of it. Well, she pops up. Right there, and that might be the difference between the first leg and the second leg. Can't really tell. But see, he pops up. Now that slip, that sec section of his foot coming up off the bag, the timing of his knee getting back will be the question if they can get something. I'll tell you what, it's awfully close. Well, you can't see, at least with that replay, where the top of the right foot is, which is under his body. Is it up against the bag by that point? See, now he's now off. You can, yep. yep, you can piece it together there. And if they want to go that route and say that he came off, it'll be 2 nothing, but the inning will be over. Yeah, that, that is a great look. If they can get that one look, and they get a lot of angles to be able to, to look at. And slow it down. You know, this is something that's a byproduct of replay. It's an unintended consequence, right? And now you've had to change the way you view slides, tags, 
and the ability to play it through and hold the tag they teach now with the infielders don't swipe tag hold it because TV can see everything and they're going to stick with the call not having enough evidence to rule Alvarez out. But definitely worth a look. And the inning continues for Robinson Chirinos. A one minute 52 second delay to look at that. No change in the call. First and third, two out. Chirinos. Takes a ball, and the argument's probably for another time or place, but I still contend they're going to have to do something where they tell the fans that are in attendance at a ball game what they're looking at. Yeah, we've got fans in front of us turning around asking us, what are they reviewing? First and third, two out. One ball, one strike as Scherzer now tries to keep it a two run game. Big hit by Correa does not have many hits this series or this postseason. But he's made him count when he is connected. Two hits tonight in game seven and now nine RBIs this postseason. On deck is the lefty Reddick out in the bullpen, the lefty Corbin. Good fastball from Scherzer, strike two. It's just amazing in these games when it's tight and then that one run gets added. It feels so huge for the team that has the lead. And then at this point of the game, you, you realize any added runs just seems like an eternity. When in the regular season, both offenses have come back from far greater deficits. And we've already talked about what the Nationals have done in this postseason alone. Just outside, two and two. They could have taken all the seats away in this stadium. I don't think any of the fans would have cared. They've been standing the whole time. I mean, it's impressive. Here comes a 2 2. A swing and a miss. The strikeout ends the inning. But a big two out RBI by Carlos Correa to double the lead in game seven after five. It's 2 0 Astros here in Houston.
Murray as we move into the sixth inning. Yuli Gurriel with a solo home run in the second. Carlos Correa just doubled the lead with a two out RBI single in the fifth. And Zach Greinke's working on a one hitter. But any sign of real trouble in that bullpen will spring back to life for Houston. They had Garrett Cole getting loose earlier. Astros have stranded nine runners on. Nationals have left one. Gomes goes after the first pitch. One out in the sixth. Tonight's telecast is sponsored by T-Mobile. Its newest signal is more powerful, more reliable, and goes farther than ever. And it's built 5G ready. And by Geico. Happy Geicoween. Halloween is tomorrow. Time for a last minute costume. For number 29 in your program, number one in your hearts, John Small. <laughs> yeah. Here's Robles. Strike one. Well, the Nationals may just exactly play to their playbook. They were down late in a lot of these games, so they still got a lot more innings to come back. They have it in them. And the Astros would like to get a little more cushion on these guys. Check swing didn't go. A ball and a strike. Washington down three to one in the bottom of the eighth in the wild card game facing Josh Hader. <laughs> and Soto delivered a base hit to right. An error. The base is cleared. They won 4 3. That was to get to the division series against the Dodgers. There's another strike, and they were down two games to one to LA. Down three to one in the top of the eighth inning in game five in Los Angeles and had back to back home runs by Rendon and Soto to tie the game and won it on the grand slam by Kendrick in the tenth. One two pitch, check swing, Guriel, easy play, two down. But they weren't facing this version of Zach Greinke any of those games. No, they weren't. And there's been a lot of soft contact, which tells you his late movement and his pitch selection has been outstanding. You see those slow curveballs, and then you see something that looks straight, but it really isn't. He's had some check swing hits and a lot of ground balls. And really, right now, he's been in total control of every aspect of this game. Hey. And a strike to Trey Turner. I cannot remember any fastball so far tonight that has been center cut. It's either been in the right hand corner of the box, the left hand corner of the box. He's done a nice job pitching that low line. This is the start of his life. Yes, it is. With what's at stake. The start of his life.
He got the start in game four. Took the loss, went six, allowed four runs on seven hits. Takes over for Scherzer, and Jake Marisnik is off the bench to bat for Josh Reddick. Yeah, AJ's going to put in his uh, best defensive outfield option and take his chances holding this lead, hoping that they maybe get a few. And this is 2 0. Marisnik is 3 for 9 this postseason, 2 for 6 in this World Series. Corbin has appeared out of the bullpen as a starter now back out of the bullpen. Strike one. He signed a nice big deal with the Nationals and he has been used in a lot of situations in this postseason. Not that easy for a young man. I know he's might have done it a couple times early but he has that electric slider that disappearing slider. He wants to work on the inside part of the plate to a right hander. Fastballs. Got to throw strikes with him. I think the lack of length from starters in a game seven surprised you, John. This is the first World Series game seven in which both starters went at least five since that 0 1 World Series. Wow. Roger Clemens and Kurt Schilling. That's in the left field, and Marisnik starts the sixth with a base hit. Progressive game flow. Yuli Gurriel with a home run in the second. And the pitching matchup of Scherzer and Greinke. Greinke's allowed one hit. He's fielded, fielded his position like the five time Gold Glove Award winner that he is. And he has been in total charge. Since the start, one on, nobody out for George Springer. Strike one. George Springer told us he loves to let it fly. He definitely let it loose right there. He will take some aggressive swings, and the power is through the roof for this young man as. He has kind of changed what a leadoff hitter is in our game today. Sit 43 home runs, including the postseason four in October after 39 out of that leadoff spot. And with two strikes, he would have a hard time against Corbin laying off the slider if his slider's right. And, you know, this is one of the most unhittable sliders. In the game, when he's throwing his fastball anywhere close for strikes in that area, and then he throws that down back foot slider to right handed hitters. 0 oh, 2. Who has a good take? I don't know if he got a good look at it, but Corbin was probably surprised he didn't swing at this pitch. It was on the plate for a long time. Fifth time out of the bullpen this postseason for Patrick Corbin. Riznik is at first with one out as Springer strikes out on that pitch in the dirt. Tried to hold up. It didn't even have to appeal. One on, one out. And that's what I'm saying with two strikes. When you get two strikes against Corbin, you're going to have to be awfully good because he is going to bury that pitch in there. And it is so difficult because he throws so hard as a left hander. You tell yourself to not miss the fastball, but you end up missing the slider. Altuve. Altuve might hit one that bounces. Back up the middle. A step. Marisnik 
Slides into Cabrera. Both are okay. And game number seven goes into inning number seven with a heart of the order coming up. Back after this from your local Fox station. Before Calvin Coolidge was president, Washington Senators won their only championship, a team led by the great Walter Johnson. Same year, first Winter Olympics took place in France. First around the world flight took place. A ticket to a World Series game at Griffith Stadium cost $5.50. And each Washington player received a winning share of just under $6,000. This franchise that's known as the Washington Nationals started in Montreal as an expansion team in 1969. 51st year of existence. They've been in D.C. since 2005. And they're trailing here to Zach Greinke in the seventh inning of game Nine. seven by two. Ah. And two quick strikes on Adam Eaton. Jake Marisnik takes over in center. That moves Springer to right. There is action for the Astros in their bullpen if Granke needs help. And it's Will Harris. <laughs> for you, John, as a longtime teammate of Greg Maddox, it was the ability of Greg Maddox to read hitters. That made him so great. And you see some of that same ability with Zach Greinke. Yeah, absolutely. And when he gets in certain counts, he has the ability to slow the hitter down when the hitter is trying to be anxious to get out in front and get hits. And on two, outside, ball one. And much like Greg Maddox's abilities to throw the ball where he wants to, that's what Zach Greinke's done tonight. He just has been that good. And when he's locked in like this on both sides of the plate, 
He's tough. He has been super tough tonight. Eight no for two. That's down and away. Two and two. Only one hit tonight for the Nationals came by Soto leading off the second. And he was erased in a double play hit into by Kendrick. Tries to make his way through this Nationals lineup for the third time tonight. Yeah, I, I, I really thought that the way this game was going to play out, that Zach Greinke would really only need to go through the lineup twice. But you got to give AJ Hinch so much credit in his first World Series game seven he managed in a way where you have a script and a game plan but you never know how it's going to play out and he did things that were unorthodox that won for him and much like tonight he's allowing his eyes to see something that's working and he's sticking with his guy just think about what he did in L.A. He used Charlie Morton he used the starters out of relief there's a great seven game series against the Dodgers and we got another one here. There's a one off. That is a rocket to left and the lead is cut in half. Rendon makes it two to one. There's that man for the Washington Nationals. No heartbeat. Or a slow heartbeat. He's got a heartbeat. It's just slow, and nothing's too big for him. Went to Lamar High School. Went to Rice. A free agent to be. He homered last night, and he's got one tonight. And this is a one-run game in the seventh. And now Soto. Outside. Outside ball one. For Rendon, his third home run of this postseason, second in as many nights in this World Series. The 1 0 pitch. Hey. I think that ability to slow down against Soto is why he's Frankie's still, still out there. Yeah, absolutely. There was the changeup that was center. It was one pitch in the middle of the plate, and it got hit out. Here's a 1 1 to Soto. Hey. Down and away. We saw Garrett Cole getting loose earlier. Now it's Will Harris, who's used to pitching out of the bullpen, getting loose. Cole still in the pen, but jacket on, seated. Two-one pitch. So Takes ball three as Granke doesn't get the pitch, and it's three and one. Wow, that was a strike. Granke wanted it. The youngest player in World Series history with. Three or more home runs in a World Series. Soto takes a walk. Second walk. And here comes A.J. Hinch. D.H. Howie Kendrick coming up. And this place will let Granke know how much 
They appreciate what he did here tonight as he exits. Sent one into the seats and left to make it a two to one ball game. And then a walk to Soto, and now Will Harris deals with Kendrick and fools him. Strike one. Harris gave up the home run last night that gave a little breathing room for the Nationals. A shot by Rendon after that long delay. He played first base, the review, all that went into it. And it was the first run scored against Will Harris in the 11 games he's worked this postseason. He struck out 11, walked one, opponents hitting 176 against him. That's down the right field line into the corner. This ball is gone for a home run. Nationals on top. Howie Kendrick has made it 3 2. Off the pole and right. After that game five, tenth inning grand slam. In the division series, then the MVP in the NLCS comes up with just his sixth hit of this World Series, and he hits the foul pole in right. Unbelievable. We talked about it, and it is amazing to keep seeing this team do it. Of course Kendrick had that grand slam was the MVP of the previous series. Wow. Al Harris gives 
up another hit. Cabrera is on with only one out. Let's go back to the home run. Fastball that cut down and he just kind of swings at it a good swing but it's late and it's it's slicing it slices right in to that screen. And Howie Kendrick. The 36 year old. Has just put the Nationals on top. A runner at first one out. A.J. Hinch is going back to his bullpen. A stunning turn of events here in Houston in the seventh. It was a one run game. The long delay. Harris got an out, then gave the two run home run to Rendon. Rendon homers in this inning, which is the beginning of the end for Zach Grinke. And after a walk, Will Harris came in and Kendrick took him out to right. And the reaction at the bullpen in Washington, D.C., is that celebration. The Nationals taking their first lead of game seven as Roberto Osuna takes over. Cole was warming earlier. That was in the sixth. Granke went out for the seventh, got the initial man eaten on a ground ball to short, then the home run by Rendon, the walk. Cole is seated. It's a 3 2 game with the Nationals on top. And you know the question is going to be why did Garrett Cole sit down and why wasn't he the first out of the pen instead of Will Harris? Yeah, you can't get a guy who started his whole career ready for a short stint relief and enter a game without giving him proper notice to start a clean inning. That's what they're hoping they could get Garrett Cole to do. You put a reliever in to get out of the middle of the inning as in this case and then Cole would have pitched the eighth. But unfortunately that script is going to be on hold based on what the Nationals do offensively. It's been a three run seventh. There's a strike. So the closer is into the ball game. Roberto Osuna. And A.J. Hinch told us before the game if you see Osuna 
before the ninth inning that means I'm thinking about Cole to close the game but now because this thing turned so fast with the home run by Kendrick the Astros are behind and the count three and one now a walk to Zimmerman and that's the fifth straight man to reach against Granky Harris and now Osuna. Nationals want to keep chaos going. The Astros are finding a way to slow this little momentum train that has uh, turned Washington's way. The crowd feeling it, crowd sensing something that they are hoping they can at least get out of the inning down one. Two on, one out. Jones fouls it right side. And it's out of play for strike one. Howie Kendrick just hit the fourth lead changing home run. Take a team from behind to out in front in a World Series game seven. Yogi Berra. Al Smith, Willie Stargell. Howie Kendrick. Gomes with two on and only one out. Leans back from an Osuda pitch up and in at 97. Ball one. In the bottom of this seventh, it'll be the heart of the order for the Astros with Brantley, Bregman, and Guriel. Strike two. Well, this could be everything that you could ever want for a game seven. It's been played crisply. With some huge moments already. That man right there and the Nationals sticking to their script. They fall behind, don't panic, come back. In this case, tonight in the seventh. Have a chance for more. Osuna deals. Two and two. Robles on deck. Corbin's in the ball game for the Nationals, and I don't see anybody getting loose for Washington in their pen right now. They have bullpen question marks as well. Here's a 2 2. Here comes a 2 2 pitch. That is on the infield and handled by Altuve. Two out. And the batter will be Robles. One out home run by Rendon. A walk. Granke taken out. Will Harris brought in. And Howie Kendrick right down the right field line off the pole to make it 3 2 Washington. Victor Robles, 3 for 23 this World Series, one RBI. Should end the inning. Springer sends game seven into the seventh inning stretch. Kendrick, the DH. He's 36. The MVP of the NLCS. A hero in the division series. Maybe a game seven hero. Nationals on top. 
time to stretch in Houston. you by State Farm. Bottom of the seventh inning of game seven. Three two now. Washington on top with a three run seventh inning on the strength of two home runs. Rendon and Kendrick. Corbin back to work. Brantley first up. Ball one. Corbin gave up a leadoff hit last inning after Scherzer went five. Struck out Springer and got a double play ball off the bat of Altuve. Daniel Hudson, the right hander, gets loose. Good pitch inside corner, two and one. Well, Max, once again, he kept them close. Maybe wasn't perfect, but only gave up the two runs. And their team responded again. Three and one. The Astros with the best home record during the regular season. They won 60 ball games here at home. They clinched the ALCS here at home. They've not been able to win in the World Series at home. That's into left center field, and Robles has it. One down to start the seventh. Five and one prior to this World Series here at home in the postseason. After leading baseball with their 60 home wins, Alex Bregman about to dig in.
Good pitch from Corbin strike one great pitch started in the middle of the plate ended up down off the plate. Bregman looking hoping that something is in the middle of the plate that he can hit is a mistake off of Corbin. Strike two. 94 from Corbin. Year one of a six year deal with the Nationals. A 30 year old left hander. And the most strikeouts in baseball this year with that slider. 0 2 pitch. Bregman just fouls it away. Last inning started with just a routine ground ball to short. And then chaos. The Nationals led three runs after that. And it happened in a hurry. 0 2 pitch is just up and away at 96. See the next level for Corbin is going to be in his career if he can get to the other side of the plate with his fastball. He's so good inside which would consider glove side. He's owned that part. If he can get a little better to the other side. <laughs> One two pitch. Ground ball slowly hit as dribble Cabrera. Two down. Unmissable moment is sponsored by YouTube TV. Try it free. Terms apply. Nationals so far this postseason nine and zero oh in games started by Scherzer and Strasburg. Constantly moving around is Max Scherzer. As Yuli Gurriel stands in. Two out, seventh inning, 3 2 Nationals. Offset. Ball one outside. We've talked about all kinds of unique things in this series, and I'm just reminded that these two teams share the same spring training complex, which is unique, and they meet in the World Series. One of them is going to have the World Series champions next year at spring training, and the other one is going to have to see it. Every day. Here's a 1 1 pitch. Guriel checked his swing, ball two. Two and two. Yuli Gurriel hits one into center, might drop, does drop. Time run is on with two down. Batter that Patrick Corbin was getting loose for in last night's ball game. Jordan Alvarez will walk to the plate here with a tying run at first, two out in the seventh in game seven. Yeah, this will be Patrick Corbin's last hitter for the most part. Oh, Menhart on the phone checking with a bullpen. Hudson's been up for a while now. The challenge for Alvarez is he may not get many fastballs. It's not missing the one he gets and not swinging at the slider that's off the plate. Easier said than done when you're facing a left hander with the slider that Corbin has. And there it is, strike one. Yeah, that one wasn't a good sign. The swing at the first one means. You're not seeing it out of the hand.
These are two huge innings that Patrick Corbin could turn in here in game seven after Scherzer went five. Oh, that was the one. When you see it up, that's the one you got to hit. When you see it down, that's the one you got to let go. No balls, two strikes. Corbin off the mound, grabs it, throws it, got him. Inning is over. Astros have left 10 runners on, trail by one after seven in game seven. That's the National Symphony Orchestra at the John F. Kennedy Center for the Performing Arts in Washington, D.C. French horns playing Baby Shark. The rally song for these Nationals, a team that all season long has been up against it after that 19 and 31 start. Trailing in that wild card game and they just keep coming back and they're up by one eighth inning. And the count nothing and two on the leadoff man, Trey Turner. Well, we thought we'd see a lot of these games in this series, and there's been a couple that could have shaped out this way, but then the offenses in particular innings took over and broke games open. But this one has the feel that could be a classic finish, classic. 
story being told of either the Nationals and I would consider one of the greatest World Series wins ever if they're able to or Houston finding a way to flex its mess muscles and win two of the last three. But when you think about what Washington has gone through to get to this point it's unbelievable. Here's a 2 2. That's down. Turner 0 for 3 tonight. The big bats are guaranteed more trips to the plate before the end of this one. For the Astros. Here's a 3 2. Two hops to Correa. One away. Talked about Josh Hader, Tom Berducci being on the mound for Milwaukee in that wild card game, but it's quite a list of some great pitchers that the Nationals have had to come back against. Absolutely, Joe. You think about five elimination games and trailing in all five. These are the pitchers when they faced a deficit and facing the end of their season. Josh Hader, you mentioned, National League Relief Pitcher of the Year, Rich Hill, and then Clayton Kershaw. Justin Verlander and Zach Brinke, three Cy Young Award winners. One out, here's Eaton. Strike one from Osuna, who took over last inning. Well, that man right there pitched his heart out and pitched almost a perfect game. One out, change up. The only mistake he made tonight. That's it. Strike. And the questions if the Astros don't come back, you know, will be about Garrett Cole. And it's worth going into again. Cole is up again for the Astros. That follow through caught Chirinos. And the count one and two on Eaton. Cole, who had not worked out of the bullpen. Since college at UCLA, didn't do it in the minors, hasn't done it in the majors. It was up, but Granke was rolling and he ran into trouble in the seventh inning. AJ Hinch went to a typical reliever, Will Harris, instead of bringing Garrett Cole in. At that point, he wasn't even throwing. So Will Harris didn't get it done. He's been so good this postseason for the Astros, a big reason why they're here. But Kendrick got him on the home run down the right field line. And the Nationals have the lead and they haven't had to deal with Garrett Cole yet. As that pitch is down and in a full count. Yeah, he hit a pretty good pitch too. You got to give Ken Kendrick all the props there because he hit a pitch that was cutting away from him away and sliced it just inside that pole. Nationals are proving that age is just a number. The oldest team in baseball. That's a one out walk. Rendon coming up. T Mobile takes fans further for the future of baseball. And now we'll take a look at the best of the 4D replay sponsored by T Mobile. Rendon connected off Granky last inning. And then after the pitching change, Kendrick connected off Will Harris and hit it off the fencing to the left of the right field foul pole for their first lead of the night. Kendrick can do that because he stays up the middle. He's not trying to pull everything. If you're trying to pull that pitch, there's no way you can hit it down the right field line for a homer. Rendon is jammed and he fouls it back, strike one. Elimination games this postseason. Anthony Rendon in the seventh inning or later. Walk, homer, double, double, homer, double, home run tonight. Come on. Are we sure about that? <laughs> that's, un that's unreal. The free agent to be. There goes a runner. Throw down by Tremaine. Too late. And the stolen base by Eaton is his first of the postseason. No, 
Well, he steals this on the pitcher. High leg kick. The reason that's a good stolen base, they're not going to walk Rendon to pitch to Soto. So you get basically two cracks at adding on another run or two. Here's a 1 1 pitch. It's upstairs, 2 and 1. a strike and the count two and two Ken Rosenthal I know you want to weigh in on the pitching move from last inning right Joe the curious move to me was not putting Asuna in for Kendrick and going with Will Harris Will Harris that was his 12th appearance this postseason he gave up the home run to Rendon last night on the off day A.J. Hinch said he deserved a day off more than anyone in America he is definitely running on fumes and yet he was the choice and not Asuna in that spot here's a two two High fly ball into left. Brantley to his left. Marisnik to his right. Two down. And with two out, the batter will be Juan Soto. Statcast AI is powered by AWS. And this got the Nationals going with one out last inning. Rendon grew up an Astros fan and trying to break Astros fans' hearts here tonight in game seven as it left at just under 104 miles per hour and traveled 374 feet. Meeting on the mound with Soto up, first base open. Kendrick, right now the hero, waiting on deck. Authentic on field caps, tees, jerseys, hoodies, and more. Get all your Astros and Nationals World Series gear and celebrate with your team at the official source, MLBShop.com. Here's Soto. Check swing on ball one. Soto's walk was the end of the night for Grenke and the start of something big for the Nationals. The pitching change, Will Harris got the call. Howie Kendrick took him out. Base hit into right. Eaton will come around third base and score. Soto delivers again. And it's 4 2 Nationals here in the eighth. That 21 year old kid. Has been unbelievable this postseason. And at times, it's like he can't get him out this World Series. No, trying to go away, and it went in, and a base open with Kendrick on deck. They talked about their game plan, but another two out run. When the Nationals came rolling into this World Series after the first two games, they had scored a high percentage of runs with two outs. It cooled off at home. Well, it's picked back up. Something about being on the road has loosened up this ball club and gotten their big hits. Nothing and one, the count one on, two out. Soto starts and stops. That ball pops out of the glove of Chirinos. 
One ball one strike so a walk to Adam Eaton and a two out RBI hit to right by Soto. And the lead is now two. And the tension hasn't been higher. In the stands here at Minute Maid Park since the start. The Astros led by two after five. The Nationals went on top last inning and now they lead by two. That's foul. Strike two. Talked about two outs and RBIs. 15 of the 28 runs that the Nationals have scored on the road in this World Series have come with two out. Again, it's been amazing. That's how Boston, everything went right for last year for Boston. I think they had about 42, 43 percent of their runs were scored with two outs in the postseason. And you're getting that kind of production with two outs. It'll be tough to beat you unless all those runs are on your way down. Roberto Osuna brings it. Kendrick fouls it off. So the interesting decision now that Dave Martinez has. Daniel Hudson's been in the bullpen just kind of hanging out. Corbin ate up a couple innings. A two run lead now. One two. That's off the glove of Curry Allen down the line. Digging for third is Soto. And it's first and third with two out and a chance for more here in the eighth. And it's a hit. As Kendrick is on base for the third time tonight and here comes A.J. Hinch. And that's going to be it for Osuna. Osuna got the final two outs in the seventh gets two outs in the eighth. Max Scherzer is all smiles in the Nationals dugout. And you know they're smiling back at Nationals Park in D.C. The lead is two. Pitching change in the top of the eighth in game seven.
Washington. The move is made to the right hander Ryan Presley. He's been better his last two appearances. Worked a perfect inning here last night. As Dribble Cabrera takes a ball up. He's got the power curveball and a good fastball as well. And as I mentioned earlier, they've been trying to get Cabrera out with the curveball, and he beat one of those curveballs for a base hit against the shift. 1 0 pitch. That's in the air to left and right at Brantley to end the inning. But the Nationals get a run. On two hits in the inning, they've left five. Bottom of the eighth, bottom of the order coming up. Nationals up two. State Farm. The city of Houston, Texas, wondering if the Astros can get two runs before the Nationals get six outs. We start the eighth inning. Correa takes a strike, and Patrick Corbin is back out there. Dave Martinez, Paul Menhart like the way he's throwing, so they stick with him. Correa, two for three. One ball, one strike. Well, the Astros definitely have to get somebody on base. You can't keep going up there, everyone trying to hit a home run. But I can tell you right now, they got to make it as tough as they can on Dave Martinez by creating some traffic on the bases. They've had traffic. The problem is that traffic has stalled on the bases. Ten left. For the Astros here in game seven the Nationals have left five. All Washington scoring in the seventh and eighth. Leading by two here's a one two to Correa.
to two. That's the pitch right there. He just becomes so much tougher when he have to cover both sides of the plate. That fastball away is going to be a huge weapon for him because his slider is so good. If he ever gets that pitch and he continues to throw that slider. Be a lot of wins for this guy in the Nationals uniform. Another 2 2. Strike three called on the inside corner one away. Second strikeout for Corbin. And he gets the benefit of a call big time on a fastball inside. With two strikes. There's no way he can handle that pitch. Kick Correo and a good opportunity for Corbin to put pressure. Correa had every reason to quarrel with that call, but he's out to start the bottom of the eighth, and the batter is Chirinos. The Astros are guaranteed to get at least Springer, Altuve, and Brantley to the plate. If anybody should reach between now and then, Bregman as well. From the hole with a backhand long throw, Turner. Two down. Back in the second after a leadoff home run by Guriel, the Astros got hits from Alvarez Correa. Second and third, two out, a 3 0 pitch, and that sinking line drive hit by George Springer was caught by Juan Soto and left before it hit the grass. Big play. Bad break for Springer as he hit it hard. The game stayed one to nothing. Two to nothing after five, and it's been the Nationals scoring four runs since then. Ball one down to Marisnik. One for one. John with starters out in the bullpen. And a lot of attention to Garrett Cole sitting out there for the Houston Astros. It's Patrick Corbin, the starter during the season. He's been busy out of the pen five times this postseason, trying to get nine outs. Yeah, he's been unbelievable. He's had a couple rocky uh, outings in the postseason, trying to get used to this kind of dual role. And to get nine outs in this circumstance in the seventh game of the World Series. That's a strike and it's two and two. Would be huge. Two two pitch. Joe Smith is getting loose for Houston in their pen. Two two delivery is down a full count with Springer who has seven World Series home runs under his belt waiting on deck. Basically on the brink of something the rest of my lifetime I'll never see again. I mean, just never going to see all road teams ever again. I mean, it, 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 it doesn't even scratch the surface of trying to figure out how that can happen, but that's what the Nationals are getting ready to do. This is the 115th World Series. A 
strikeout ends the inning. And how about Patrick Corbin? Ninth inning rolls in. Nationals will bat, leading by two. TV on Fox. The bullpen in Washington, D.C. Celebrating. And the bullpen tonight for the Washington Nationals has featured one guy, Patrick Corbin. As Joe Smith takes over and deals a strike to Ryan Zimmerman. Ninth inning underway for two Nationals here in game seven. This series. It might just be series of the unexpected. That is up the middle for a base hit. And Zimmerman is on to start the ninth. That'll bring in Jan Gomes. I, I mean, the Nationals were coming in and facing a ton of horsepower for the Astros. You're talking about Cole. Verlander had to face him twice and to their credit they held their own they knocked off the, the two hottest pitchers Granke was fantastic hung in there big hit after big hit after big hit and they are three outs away but they got the lead and we're able to jump on top without having to deal with Garrett Cole here for the third time in the series coming off that win in game five. So they did the damage. Yeah. And kept Cole beyond that right field fence. They did the damage in the smallest window they could do it. Yep. Think about it. it. It is really the only window of opportunity 
That's why that home run against Grinky was so big. It wasn't that it cut the deficit by one. It just made the opportunity for them to score in that inning before they got to Cole because once Grinky went out there, they weren't bringing Cole in the middle of the inning. Here's Smith. Throws to second out over to first. Safe. Let's go through that again. So Granke is rolling with a one hitter and a shutout going into the seventh. Pitching the game of his life. He gets a leadoff man, Adam Eaton, in the seventh inning, then gives up the home run to Rendon, who's just come up big time after time for these Nationals. And then the walk. Cole's not up at that point. He had been up the inning prior. Here's Robles. To strike one. And, and like you said, A.J. Hinch, to bring in Garrett Cole, wanted to bring him in to start an inning. In order to do that, in the seventh, he would have had to take out Zach Grinke, who was pitching a one-hit shutout. Exactly. And Cole was just kind of getting loose to get his arm ready for when the potential inning would have been coming around. Robles into shallow center. Marisnik won't get there. Down to second is the runner Gomes. Two on, one out. And at that point, to what you just said, Granke was cruising and getting quick outs. It wasn't even like getting in and out of trouble. And so you're buying that inning. And up until the seventh, there was no reason. Ground out to short. He's he's cruising. Back to the top of the order here in the ninth inning for Trey Turner. Hitless on the night, 0 for 4, dealing with the right hander and taking strike one. It simply put the hardest game in the world to manage. There is just no script that you can go by that seems to ever work all the time. And Will Harris is the guy that A.J. Hinch selected. He told us, yes, he was worn down. He had gotten huge outs all postseason. And he was one of, if not the most valuable guy he had in his bullpen in October. That is foul down the line, strike two. And Trey Turner broke his back. Now where Keedy is getting loose. On the other side, the decision upcoming for Davy Martinez. Corbin has flown through three innings. Does he pull him and go to Hudson with the top of the order coming up? Or does he leave him in? And they're talking about it right now. I don't know. Usually when a guy's laughing, that means the stress is off. <laughs> right? Or his duties have been relieved. I don't know. It's been it, it's been a slow heartbeat, literally, for Dave Martinez until yesterday when he was on the field kind of losing his mind you can understand why but his team has rallied around him and tonight it's just taken two pitchers to get through eight here's another foul by Turner the only thing I will say that becomes a little bit of a disadvantage for Daniel Hudson he has been in that position for two and a half innings and the anxiety grows and you stand there waiting to take your turn. Not that easy. Here's another one two to Turner. You have to believe Hudson thought his turn was coming last inning. With three right handed batters coming up in the bottom of the eighth. But the Nationals added to their lead, made it a two run game, and so Corbin went back out. Those are the three guys coming up 
in the ninth inning for Houston, the top of the order. So Hudson more than likely faces the right-handed hitters, and then you got Brantley, and you got Doolittle. Or you got Doolittle for Alvarez if it gets that far. Trey Turner could take a lot of the stress away if he can deliver here with two on and one out in the ninth. He did not swing and the bases are loaded on two hits and a walk. And here comes A.J. Hinch. And now Joe Smith who's been so good this postseason is relieved and Urquidy is coming in with Adam Eaton coming up. to see what all the buzz is about. It's the live primetime spectacle that has millions of viewers on their feet every Friday night. The new era of Friday Night Smackdown is only on Fox. Well, if the Astros are going to have any chance at all, they have to get out of this inning. And what a position to put it in this young man who delivered big time in Washington. Bases loaded, one out. Against a stingy hitter. Tough to double up. Jose Urquidy in that game four start beat Patrick Corbin went five allowed no runs on two hits in an eight to one win out of the bullpen and ball one inside as Eaton was more than willing to let that ball hit him but it's just like human nature it's like sitting behind the screen at home plate you're always going to flinch when it hits the screen and you're always going to get out of the way and wonder why you didn't just Stick a leg out. Bases loaded, one out. Urquidy out of the bullpen. That is up the middle. One run scores. That's Gomes. They hold Robles. Now send him as Marisnik kicks it in center. Two more runs, and it's 6 2. Nationals up by four here in the ninth. Meaton has delivered. Oh. 
Super tough spot for Urquidy. No room for error. Great contact guy in Eaton. And they can smell it right there. Adam Eaton has had a huge World Series. Came in with a top average in this Nationals lineup at 333. As Rendon takes a ball up and away, it goes down as a single, two RBIs. And an error on Marisnik in center that allowed Turner to get to third. They were holding Robles until Marisnik had trouble with the ball in center and sent him to the plate. Rendon fouls it, the ball and strike. Six to two, and a chance for more, only one out. And the Nationals in this series have done big damage from the seventh on. Lucky we had never seen him, man. Adam Eaton with a walk, a steal, and a run scored last inning as two RBIs here in the ninth. Ball two, down and away, two and one. And the stories are written about this game seven. If the Astros don't come back, part of the narrative will be a two nothing lead, Garrett Cole available. The lead evaporated in a blink, and Garrett Cole never got into the ball game. That means he could very well have thrown his final pitch as a Houston Astro. Yeah, and unfortunately for A.J. Hinch, guys that were really good out of the pen in these situations weren't. But you're right, that's what will dominate the narrative probably. It's a four-run game, runners at the corners, only one out, and a 3-1 pitch. Fouled back by Rendon. Hot Stove League will be cranking soon, and Garrett Cole will be a free agent. Where will he land? Anthony Rendon evidently has that contract that's been offered and rejected. And Steven Strasburg, who could very well be the MVP of this World Series, has three days at the end of this series to opt out of the final four years and $100 million of his contract. Rendon pops it up on the infield. Two down. And that'll bring in Soto. When the Senators won it all in 1924, Earl McNeely hit a 12th inning walk-off double in Game 7 to beat the Giants, and Walter Johnson, the big train, pitched four scoreless innings in relief. It was his only relief appearance all year after winning 23 games in the regular season. He had started and lost Games 1 and 5 in the series, a guy who had 417 wins in his 21-year career with the Senators. And if Corbin goes back out there, it would be a four inning effort tonight in game seven. Not saying he will, who knows? But he has a chance to, certainly, as that misses inside to Soto, ball one. And we go back to the way that Rizzo held, held true to this team. Dave Martinez said, when we get healthy, we're going to be better. They built their team around starting pitching. It's the starting pitching that was able to get them this point. They're the oldest team in baseball. That's saying a lot because there's so much youth in the game. Soto flies one to center for Marisnik, and the inning is over, but more damage is done. After three in the seventh, one in the eighth, two here in the ninth, top of the order, and the last chance for the Astros. Bottom of the ninth inning, game seven, Nationals leading by four.
inning of game seven and Daniel Hudson takes over Corbin three brilliant innings no runs two hits three strikeouts Springer takes a strike at 96 what a job Corbin in line for the victory Hudson picked up from Toronto Washington is third franchise he's been with this season and he helps settle down their bullpen that's a mile high on the infield for Cabrera one up after the game we'll have the awarding of the commissioner's trophy along with the announcement of the Willie Mays World Series most valuable player award presented by Chevrolet. If this is not Houston's night, you think about how they started this decade, 2011 through 2013, 324 losses over those three years. They've won over 100 games the last three years, world champions two years ago. They're just the sixth team in Major League Baseball history to win over 100 three straight years. But here they are with two outs to go down by four in the ninth inning to the Nationals this resilient team that just refused to quit. A strike makes it 0 2 on Altuve. You know there's been bigger underdogs to win the World Series but I really can't imagine there's been a better journey with where this team was. I'm trying to think of just scenarios than other sports that would it's like losing or hitting long buzzer beaters. A strikeout for the second out, and the Nationals are one out away. Because taking into context who they were facing when they scored the runs, it's not that just the teams rally, but it's who they beat. And the very first guy they beat was probably the hardest guy to beat. And Hader with the Milwaukee Brewers. It's been 34,718 days since October 10th, 1924, when the Washington Senators won it all. Here's Michael Brantley. Ball one inside. The fans in D.C. are oh. great baseball fans. Not just now, but they have been for a long time, known as a second division team for years two senators teams left that's a strike the city went 33 seasons without baseball then the Expos became the Nationals in 2005 they struggled after moving to D.C. And then the first round of the playoff heartbreak over and over again. And here they are with Brantley taking inside for ball two. <laughs> Trying to win their fourth road game of this World Series. That one is down the line. In the corner, it is foul. And now the Astros down to their final strike. Franchise that went 50 seasons without a championship, without a World Series. Starting in 1969 in Montreal and Trying to wrap up this World Series and win their first championship in franchise history. Inside and a full count.
Scherzer, Corbin, Hudson. And now a 3 2 pitch. Out of play. An organization owned by the Lerner family. Mike Rizzo, the general manager. Dave Martinez, the field manager. Here they are, one strike away, one out away. 3 2. Here it is! The Washington Nationals are world champions for the first time in franchise history. Six to two is the final. Patrick Corbin earned the win, taking over for Max Scherzer. Will Harris suffers the loss. And DC has its second championship. The Nationals have their first. Became stars, the veterans kind of kept the ship going. A great mix of young and old, and the oldest team in baseball is the last one standing. As they win in game seven here in Houston, and the celebration is on. Down to Ken Rosenthal. Thanks, Jim. He just left. Whoever Kenny had just took off. We've got plenty of time to get interviews from down on the field. Five innings for Scherzer, three for Corbin, one perfect frame for Daniel Hudson. Just to finish with those fans in D.C., the Senators from 61 to 71 finish, as they say, in the second division all 11 seasons. And the phrase was Washington, first in war, first in peace, last in the American League. Baseball came back in 2005, and the celebration is on as a championship is headed back to our nation's capital, secured here in Houston by this never say die Nationals team. Yeah, it really is. It's it's hard for me to think of a, a again a team that had to overcome as much as they did 19 and 31 manager goes through some health scares and a day yesterday where a lot of them were concerned of how fired up he was. You could see him in the dugout as calm and as relieved and the team that this truly was a team has captured that city. Yeah. What a moment. Ken, back to you. Thanks, Joe. We're here with Max. Max, you're a three-time Cy Young winner, and now you're a World Series champion. After all you went through physically the last few days, what does this mean to you? It just means I'm part of the greatest team 
2019. These guys, they battled, it didn't matter. It was staying to fight, that was our model. It was the next guy up. Whoever, everybody gave it their all. Whoever it was always gonna produce. And we took it all the way and we won, we won the whole thing. You went five innings, you had base runners every inning. Right. How did you get through it just allowing two runs? Just stay tough. Uh, they're a great team, great offense. They were grimy. Just try to make pitches. Stay with Jan. Trust your instincts and just just compete. Lay it online. Just whatever you gotta do. I was on. Granky did a heck of a job tonight of working quick. And I was.